So today I am starting the final assembly on my 1953 Westinghouse automatic washing machine. Um, it's primed, it's painted now. I finally got the gold emblems back from the replater because these emblems were gold from the factory because this was a deluxe model washer so I had them re-gold plated. Uh, it was probably the most expensive part of this entire restoration. So right now I'm running a small drill bit through these holes by hand so that I can get the hole um, wide enough because when you paint it, paint is has a thickness to it and it gets in the holes and you can't press the emblem through it so I gotta widen those holes back up a little bit and uh, we'll pin the emblems in with these little abity clips I'm reusing the factory ones because even the smallest ones I can find still aren't small enough for the um, rods that go through the back so I'm reusing the original clips you can see here the rods that poke through and these are the original little clips and I'll go ahead and clip these on to secure the emblem to the piece. If you're getting value out of this video and you like seeing stuff like this, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to see more stuff like this because it helps me out more than you could know. So now what I'm going to be doing is buffing out this top piece, this aluminum slash stainless steel. I'm not too sure. I'm pretty sure it's aluminum. Uh, this piece holds the laundromat emblem in the center of the top of the washer. And you can see that haze that was on it is kind of dirty. So I got my wax bar here and I'm going to just slightly run it over the buffing wheel. And that's how you get the wax on there. The wax and the rotation of the buffing wheel is really what... The magic sauce is to getting stainless steel and aluminum to polish up very nice.
so now it's time to start actually putting some pieces on the machine uh, the front piece that I'm gonna put on right now is probably the most difficult piece to do because it's got so much hook to it um, that rubber boot hooks to it it's got a couple wires that hook to it uh, and it's kind of just an awkward shape to try and get on And I don't think I've stressed enough how important this boot is because over time, the boot is not reusable. The factory boots are not reusable. And I got in touch with some really good people through a vintage appliance group on Facebook that taught me how to use this boot, which is for a Westinghouse washing machine that's a few, year, few years newer and adapt it to this machine. Um, really cool people. So I was able to take this boot from like a 1958 or 59 Westinghouse and use it for my 1953 Westinghouse, which is awesome. I would not have been able to complete this restoration without it. I mean, there's a lot of things you can retrofit, but this is not one of those things. So this boot is crucial to this machine working. So, so I now have the machine all set together. Here is the factory manual. And if you go down here, it says indicator scale. And the indicator scale is probably one of the coolest features on this machine. And I'll show you exactly what that is now. So when you take the door down, it's like a little platform here. And it is a scale. It actually tells you whether it's a small, medium, or large load. How cool is that? I don't know of any washing machine that ever does anything like that. So that is part of the laundry file, and we can go ahead and set our clothes in, and I'll actually take you through a cycle of me using the washing machine, how it was meant to be used. So as you turn the dial from the off position to the cycle you want, you have your choice of hot, medium, I know it looks like MFD, but it's medium and then warm, and then you can pull the knob out and that's what starts your cycle. Now it's going through its rinse cycle. Now that buzzing noise I think is the solenoid. Uh, it's working fine, but I think I just need to tighten up the connectors or something like that and get it to stop. It's just a bug to work out.